Welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite new mama bougie vintage and today's video is of course <sighs> by popular demand. Love in hip hop Hollywood. You guys gave me a run for my money. You guys decided for me whether or not I would be doing this video. But we're gonna switch things up here because last time I said okay you guys I want 2,000 likes and I'll think about it. I got way more than 2,000 likes on that video, so if you want me to review next week's episode, this video has to have over 5,000 likes. I said what I said and I meant what I said, so enjoy. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Okay, get your 5,000 likes on, girl. So this episode actually started with a K. Michelle monologue and kind of like a recap or like old scenes from last season. And by the end of this monologue, K. Michelle was letting us know that her name is no longer K. Michelle, but Kimberly, okay? She is Kimberly in the flesh. So Miss Kimberly Moniz and Bridget Kelly are all out for, I guess, lunch and a little chit chat, a little hoorah. A little Ponderosa <laughs> and Kimberly starts talking about it's so weird to call her Kimberly honestly Kimberly starts talking about how she got her ass shots at the Intercontinental Hotel you know now she's getting them removed or she got the first little thing to dissolve it but the next set of surgery or the next surgery she has is to have it cut out if you haven't seen K. Michelle, she already got the surgery, so I guess it's going to play out on the show, but she got her butt reduced back to normal. K. Michelle said that the ass shots were affecting her life. Her health was not in, you know, the best condition because she got illegal butt shots. She didn't go to Dr. Miami and get a fat transfer. Nobody had that m amount of fat in their body to transfer into their bum. Like, K. Michelle's butt was actually redonkulous. So they move on to talking about Booby and Bridget Kelly because of last season and basically Bridget Kelly and Booby and Brooke actually are all on I guess decent terms. They're not the best of friends but there is no bad blood. K. Michelle thinks Booby is fine like everybody else does. <laughs> He's fine but he looked like a fuckboy boy like honestly I can't with Booby. No, thank you. So Bridget asked K. Michelle about Lyrica opening up for her because K. Michelle had like an album release party thing. And Kimberly starts to tell her how uh, Lyrica was an hour late and basically how she's just bad for business. So of course K. Michelle starts sh throwing mad shade <laughs> to Lyrica telling her or saying, I don't know who you are. Let's why you like it, like being super shady, super duper shady. And I was just like, you better leave Disney shout out of your mess, bitch. Leave them out, okay? Let's why you like it is a queen. K. Michelle was being very, very messy in this scene. She also was referring to Brooke as a bad Angela Bassett impersonation. <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with Kay? Like, she's doing the absolute most. Anyway, Kimberly says that she's going to talk to Lyrica about her unprofessionalism and about her being late to the showcase and right to Tay Tay My thing is, why wouldn't she have approached her about that long time ago, whenever the album release party was? Like, why would she have waited until Love and Hip Hop aired to address Lyrica. I'm sure they've spoken before then. I guess anything for a storyline. Anything for a damn storyline. So the shade I just used on my eyes was Shisha Smoke from the Fenty Beauty palette and now I'm going to use Fez Up. So while they're having this conversation, Monice was not saying much. Like she was very very quiet uh, and then she finally chimed in and she began discussing her issue with, I guess, Ray and Princess. Moniz, not too long ago, decided that she was going to take to Instagram and basically say that Brandy, so Ray J's sister, is the surrogate for 
princess's baby and it was fake news obviously she said the reason that she did it was because she does not like anybody with the last name Norwood I was like girl if you don't sit down somewhere like you will not come for any of the Norwoods you messy bitch Honestly, I feel like a lot of people in love and hip-hop are in their own way. Tommy's in her own way. Monice is in her own way. K. Michelle is in her own way, chow. Everybody's in their own damn way. In confessional, Monice states that she doesn't care or give a crap about what anybody thinks about what she has to say about Princess or her demon seed. I was like, nah. -uh. <laughs> nope. Nope. She doesn't care how it affects Princess or the child that she's carrying. That's what she said. So of course the next scene is Princess meeting up with none other than Miss Nikki Baby. And I was like, this is an unusual pairing. But they said they put the petty stuff behind them and they are no longer, I guess, beefing. When I was looking at Nikki in confessional, I was like wondering if she got her nose done again because that shit was looking non-existent. I was like, no, leave your nose alone, please and thank you. You look absolutely insane. Do not touch your nose. I was like, ain't no way this is just contouring. Like, this shit looks crazy. At the time of this scene, Princess was six and a half months pregnant, so she was just about due. Her baby is so freaking cute, by the way. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. While they're having this little powwow, of course, Lyrica shows up. Princess is irritated with Lyrica because apparently they have a pregnancy pact and Lyrica is supposed to be pregnant at the same time as her, but that's not happening right now. The reason that it's not happening is because apparently A1 is a workaholic. Boy, bye. <laughs> Boy, bye. And she said she needs to go get a toy. I said, bitch, if you don't put in Bo at the checkout on adamandeve.com and get you some toys, honey, you better. <laughs> but obviously she couldn't hear me because I was yelling at my television screen. So at this scene, uh, a woman named Paris shows up and she's basically kind of, she's not PR, but she's, um, she used to be an assistant to, I think it was assistant, to uh what's her name keisha cole or something like that uh she has history with k michelle and she's basically your plug like once you get to hollywood she gets you in with the who's who of the who's who basically so they say i ain't never heard of this lady before so i can't vouch for her but i mean if miss nikki baby says true then it's true you feel me so the first thing she does is address princess and she's like Obviously the blogs are lying because you're clearly pregnant and then that basically was Princess's lead-in to talk about Monice basically spilling false information that Brandy was carrying her child. So she tells the girls about that. I guess they said they never heard that. I was like, even I heard that. I'm all the way in Canada. How you guys don't know what's going on in your own city? Like, hello? Princess then stated, if you guys see Monice, I need you to drop that pin and let me know where I need to show up to. Lyrica says, girl, if you don't sit your little pregnant ass down, you're not fighting anybody. You're pregnant. And I was just like, honestly, though, when you are pregnant, that's when people try you the most. Like, I am living proof. I am a living testimony. That's what happens. And you really do want to be fighting. Like, so I don't blame Princess because... Monice was doing way too much, but Paris basically says that she definitely will because us big belly girls need to stick together, her words. <laughs> Paris is on the heavier side. Anyway, in confessional, Princess is mother effing glowing, okay? Like glowing, and I'm like, you look like everything right now. Like you're, you're literally everything. She looks so beautiful in confessional. Her makeup is A1. No sauce. No sauce, hunty. So Lyrica starts talking about how she just got off tour with K. Michelle. And Paris starts throwing some shade K. Michelle's way. And so they're like, oh, what happened? And so basically, in an old season 
uh, K. Michelle accused Paris of stealing from her. She said that she stole money off her credit card. So Paris clarifies this and she says she did not steal money off her credit card. She used a car service that was on her phone and I guess K. Michelle's credit card was attached to it and it was only $50. <laughs> And so she basically put out slander slanderous information about Paris and so people really were thinking that she stole from her but that wasn't the case. The way she described it sounded like Uber to me. I mean it is what it is. It was probably just Uber and it was a $50 ride and K. Michelle was mad. Paris says that K. Michelle is a sweet girl but she definitely has a side to her. And she said that Lyrica is going to find out about that side sooner or later. Which is true. She is about to find out about it because K. Michelle is not happy with Lyrica right now. And she will be losing her shit this episode. <laughs> Go into the chapel. Gonna get married. Anyway, Paris said that she needs to be hanging around boss bitches. And she's looking at those girls like they're some boss bitches so she's trying to be in with them and then she says that she needs to be also she also needs to be around some boss zaddies but she didn't call them zaddy boss zaddies I'm calling them that <laughs> and she was referring to Ray J she told princess that you know she needs to get in good with Ray J and so princess says that she's actually not talking to Ray J right now princess stated that she knew Having Ray J's baby would be a roller coaster ride. I said, so sis, why would you have his baby then? Why do people, why do women do things that they know are no good for them? Like, it makes no sense. Stated that anytime they get into like a small argument, Ray J runs off to Vegas and does the most. Let's have a toast, you know? He also said that the last time he left, that she was DM'd a photo from his hotel room. Somebody's friend sent it to them and said that, you know, they don't know if they had sex or not, but she was in his hotel room and that was enough for her to be upset about. She's pregnant, it's gonna happen. So Princess moved out of the house and I said, bitch, you better, cause ain't nobody about to send me no pictures of my man in a hotel that ain't no bitch is supposed to be in and I'm gonna stay at home with my pregnant belly. You must be fucking joking. Had it been Rashida, she would have stayed there and waited up for Kirk. She would have messaged him and said, hey babe, when are you coming home? <laughs> but Princess is not with the shit at all. So Ray J is in confessional and of course he starts talking about how he has lots of business ventures going on in Vegas and of course he says that but his biggest collaboration right now is that he's having a baby so of course a1 pulls up on ray j and there's a crowd of people outside i have no idea why there was a crowd of people there there were definitely some vh1 extras when a1 pulls up Ray J introduces him to the crowd as a super producer and everybody starts wooing but I really feel like they want to be like who instead of woo chat and I was like yeah no yeah no don't nobody know who A1 is if you don't watch Love and Hip Hop A1 is not a known person definitely not before Love and Hip Hop and after Love and Hip Hop he still is not known so let's not so of course A1 is still out here with his manicured nail polish hands <laughs> He said his song is number 26 on the urban charts. I don't know what the song's called, so don't ask me, please, and thank you. Don't nobody know what the song's called. And so he asked Ray if Ray's seen Lucci. And so I was like, oh damn, Reggie and Lucci gonna be on the show now? That's crazy. But I forgot there's a, another guy named Lucci. So it's it's not the other Lucci that everybody does know. YFN Lucci, it's a different Lucci. So Lucci was talking about his life and I was bored so I was not paying attention at all. I don't know what's going on in Lucci's life right now. It's none of my business. Lucci apparently invited a private jeweler that had his jewelry stored in look, what looked like sandwich bags to this event for the guys to purchase jewelry, but uh, I don't know what the purpose of this shit was. I really don't. Honestly, I felt like the jeweler's jewelry was fake, but I don't know. I wasn't there to see it in person, so I can't comment on that. Ray J said he needs to buy 
an apology gift, which then reminded Lucci that he had to pull up Princess's Instagram so that he could gossip with the boys. And I was just like, this is some bitch shit. That's the one thing I don't like about Love & Hip Hop. Well, not, there's many things I don't like about Love & Hip Hop, but the one thing that really irks me is that they, the guys end up gossiping like women do, and sometimes worse. Anyway, he pulls up Princess's Instagram because she had shaded Ray. And then Ray said that his wife is hormonal. I said, I said, do you mean hormonal? <laughs> the man said hormonal. Hormonal is not a word. The word is hormonal. And of course your wife is gonna be hormonal when she's pregnant and people are sending her pictures from your hotel room. He then explains that the DM that she got was because his homies that are not in the picture asked for the girls to come over and one of those girls were being messy and DM'd her for no reason at all because that girl was not there for Ray. He said that seeing Princess's Instagram made him want to turn up more. I was like, Hunty, you need to turn up less and go home to your wife and fix your problems that you're having at home. How about that? How about them apples? Miss Kimberly is doing a rehearsal. Lyrica shows up to see her at her rehearsal. And of course, this is Kimberly's moment to address her issue. K. Michelle says to Lyrica, or tries to like page her on her tardiness, because you cannot be tardy to the party, honey. It's just not acceptable. Unacceptable! She begins to tell her how she feels about her. So Lyrica was unaware that she was an hour late, and she said if she was late, she blames management. And I mean, this whole scene could have been avoided had everybody just been a grown-up, but we got childish real quick. In confessional, Kim Michelle says that she could, or sorry, Kimberly says that she could be, she could put that red wig on <laughs> in no time and be that Kim, be that Kim Michelle. But she feels like Lyrica needs to get with it or get lost because Lyrica does not want Kim Michelle, or sorry, Kimberly to become K. Michelle. She don't want that smoke. So Kimberly tells Lyrica, you know, you have wrote some great songs, but nobody gives an F. <laughs> and when she said this on, you could read Lyrica's face and you could just see that she was not impressed with this statement. And quite frankly, if I was Lyrica, I wouldn't be impressed either. So of course they begin to argue. Lyrica states that she was only aware that she would be opening for K. Michelle three days before the event. And so K. Michelle says that Lyrica's acting like she couldn't get Suzy Q or Little Debbie, did she say? No, she said Suzy Q or Rainbow Bright <laughs> to open up for her instead. Basically stating that she could have literally got anybody, but she got her and it was disappointing. So K. Michelle called Lyrica entitled and Lyrica became offended. She was not happy with that at all because she feels like she's worked hard for everything she has and K. Michelle is discrediting her. I feel like on Love & Hip Hop that's like the main theme on every single uh, season. Somebody's always trying to discredit somebody else not realizing that all y'all on the same damn show. Like. <laughs> All you guys are on the same show, and I know it looks crazy right now. I know my foundation looks like, Bo, what are you doing? Why does it look like you have on blackface? <laughs> but don't worry about it. I, I did my foundation a little darker today. Argument continues, and K. Michelle starts yelling about how Lyrica must have been on a Neiman Marcus shopping spree because she was gone for a whole hour. And they were doing a lot of yelling, so I did miss some of the dialogue. But needless to say, they were not happy with each other in this moment. Lyrica said something about faking it until you make it. And so K. Michelle said that she doesn't need to fake anything. Like how Lyrica faked her marriage. And I was like, whoa, this is coming from far left. Like I know Lyrica and A1 eloped and nobody was there. But... Is their marriage actually fake? This is a bit much. This is some tea. Lyrica was like, I faked my marriage? Like she was genuinely like, okay, K. Michelle, you're talking about the side of your freaking neck. 
you need to stop. At that point, she gets ready to walk out. Because you know what? When you are arguing with somebody and they just start saying any and everything, stuff that doesn't even make sense, you might as well leave, you know? <laughs> you might as well just take your shit and go because that's when you know that the person is not really arguing with you because of what they said, but they have other issues that they're clearly not bringing up and they're finding anything to say to, I guess, keep the argument going. In confessional, K. Mich K Michelle states that Lyrica and A1 have what she calls an industry marriage no <clears throat> a music marriage which basically is that they use each other for music purposes but there's no love there anytime she sees Lyrica and A1 together they're arguing or they're fighting and that ain't love at this point a doctor <laughs> shows up to give her some IV because she wasted all that energy yelling at Lyrica she needed to get her fluids up <laughs> because her booty is killing her. So she got some IV administered, uh, I guess, to help her with her energy levels. In confessional, Lyrica is really upset and she said the last time she checked, K. Michelle's fake ass <laughs> was practically killing her. So she has some damn nerve to call her marriage or anything about her fake when her whole ass is fake. K. Michelle said all these bitches, I guess the ones in Hollywood, have another thing coming and they're gonna get a taste of the real. And honestly, I just need to touch on K. Michelle's image because from the very beginning of Love & Hip Hop, when K. Michelle first came onto the Love & Hip Hop scene, it was evident that she struggled with her image and people say she's problematic and negative and nobody wants to work with her race they take. So because of all those negative stereotypes about her and everything like that, she had left Love & Hip Hop and kind of vowed to not come back, much like Erica Mena. Everybody seems to do this shit. But really, they need the coin. They need the check because they're not doing as well as they thought they would without the show. You know, sometimes people think they super popping and think they could go do other stuff when realistically, they can't. <laughs> I think that if K. Michelle is really trying to further herself as an artist and really, you know, be professional and sell records, she needs to stay far far away from love and hip-hop because love and hip-hop is literally no good for anybody's career the people that have made something about something of themselves from love and hip-hop is literally cardi b and herself and cardi b is far more successful than k michelle and once cardi b left love and hip-hop you think cardi b is gonna go back on that shit hell no i don't even think she'll I don't even think that she'll, you know, go on as a guest to talk to Mariah. Like, I don't think so. When you're done with something like that, that's so negative, you should be done. Faux life. I look like a skeleton. Lyrica ends up coming back inside, child. I don't know why she did that. <laughs> she was not done. She wanted to have the last word, honey. But she should have known that with K. Michelle, that may not be possible. So when she comes back inside, she says to K. Michelle, this is what you're doing? Being the same messy K? I don't remember her exact words, so don't quote me on that. So K. Michelle starts yelling and telling her that the same K is doing better than she is. And in my head, I said, no, bitch, because y'all both are loving hip hop. Y'all are both struggling artists. You guys are not doing better. Y'all is equal, okay? Equal. Equal. Okay, y'all is two of the same. Peas in a pot, you guys are on the same level here. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Kay. Let's not. So when Kay started going off, I started to think, is this woman on drugs? Because who the hell acts like this? Like, she literally started going off, okay? Honestly, I was like, sober people don't act like this. I'm sober. I don't act like that, <laughs> you know? And so the way she just kind of flips to just so upset... 
I don't know. It's something we need to watch out for. So she starts yelling, what what the F are you doing? She starts yelling all kinds of stuff at Lyrica. She's calling her Storm because Lyrica had on like a white blonde wig, 613 blonde. Actually, it was more grayish. 613 still has a yellow to it even though it's white blonde, but this is not a hair video, so let's not get into all that. Lyrica is kind of shocked. She looks shocked at how Kay Michelle was talking to her. She was not impressed at all. <laughs> I hope it'd be either. Honestly, people need to stop going toe to toe with K Michelle. They really just need to stop. So K Michelle tells Lyrica, "You have on Spanx. We are in public." <laughs> and I said, "I can't. Like, I always wear my biker shorts. I don't wear Spanx as shorts, but I wear my biker shorts." And so K Michelle is actually holding her rehearsal mic, and she just starts giving it to Lyrica like she just starts dissing her and just doing the most and so Lyrica goes to get a mic of her own she ain't about to let somebody be have a mic and diss her and not get a mic and diss back so she tells Lyrica something about she doesn't want to get slapped with her lopsided pum pum and I'm like what is going on here honestly I missed a lot of the dialogue because I couldn't keep up with it I was like who said what now whose vagina is lopsided like why does somebody have a lopsided vagina and why would she be getting slapped with it? You guys tell me what she said in the comment section because I really have no idea. And honestly, I wasn't going to sit there and rewind it and try to figure it out because I have better things to do with my time, you know? She then proceeds to diss Lyrica's album. And at this point I was like, this is too much because as an artist, she should know better than to diss somebody else's work, you know? I actually listened to um, Lyrica's album and it wasn't bad, so I don't know why Kay is doing this, but she is doing it. <laughs> so once Lyrica gets a mic of her own to start saying stuff to Kay Michelle, the security steps in and they try to make sure that they cannot get to each other. So Kay Michelle tries to rush over to Lyrica, but security obviously stops her and she says, I'm not gonna touch that trash. And Lyrica's like, your mama's trash. <laughs> I was like, your mama's trash. This is just going way too freaking left right now. I can't. So you wanna talk about mothers. <laughs> so they're arguing like mad. Kay Michelle pushes a stool in Lyrica's direction. She tries to hit her with it. She misses. And then Kay Michelle starts letting off all kinds of clips in Lyrica's throat. I was like, what is going on here? So she starts spilling the tea, okay? The tea. Hey, Michelle starts yelling about how Lyrica tried to f Safari. Lyrica, married to A1 Lyrica, okay? This is the same Lyrica we are talking about. When she said this, when she called her out for this, Lyrica was speech Listen, she looked guilty. So I can't wait to see this unfold because she definitely looked uber guilty. I'm talking, she looked like she really did try to holla at Safari, you know? We gonna see him. So Kay Michelle even goes as far as saying she saw the text messages. I said, oh, there were texts. <laughs> and honestly, I felt like this kind of made Safari look bad. Because why is he telling K. Michelle this? I know they're friends. So I'm hoping that the only reason he went to K. Michelle with it was because he's asking for advice because him and A1 are technically friends. So if his wife is trying to screw him, you know, maybe he went to K. Michelle and asked her, what should I do? Look at that highlight, bitch. <laughs> A bitch cute. So by the end of this, Lyrica didn't really have much to say. She was escorted out. And honestly, K. Michelle needs to get into battle rapping or stand-up comedy or something because she is quick with it. Also, I feel like I feel like her 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 talents are being wasted. She needs to write diss records for people because she is so rude. So rude. And because she's so loud, you can't even get a word in edgewise. I would never try to take on that bitch ever. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> By the end of this, Kate Michelle was talking about she knows the Lord and he has heard her cry. I said, I cannot deal. Leave God out of this because you are just messy. Messy. So I did take a purple pencil on my lower lash line. And now, I'm smoking that shit out. 
with purple. I think I really go through phases with my makeup. I'll get back into the show in a second, bitch. Let me talk. So I think I go through phases with my makeup. Like when I was doing the blue and the green looks, I was so into it. And now I'm like into purple. Purple is one of the best colors for brown eyed girls. And I am indeed a brown eyed girl. And this is a look. <laughs> Peach, this is a look, okay? This is a look. So, Tierra Marie, Miss Nikki Baby, and a bunch of the guys are at a mansion party. And Tierra Marie and Ray J actually have not spoken in years. And so they do a little bit of catching up. No big deal. Miss Nikki Baby kind of calls Ray J out for not going home and or not seeing his wife in a whole week because obviously him and Princess are having some issues. So Luigi is there and he's performing a song and it's actually not bad. And you know what? We don't get to hear a lot of the cast music. Love and Hip Hop is not really about the music. The show really needs a new name, but neither here nor there but yeah his song was a sound and half bad I said okay we see you so of course a1 is sitting there chilling minding his business oh that wasn't supposed to happen that's a lot of glitter that they just left on my face <laughs> a lot I'll be right back in one second I'll be back so a1's chilling and some big booty girl <laughs> approaches him and I literally look like the tin man I sprayed way too much highlighter on my face I'm so happy I have nowhere to go <laughs> not highlighter I sprayed too much of the fix plus I am glistening I literally look like the tin man so of course this big booty girl is a stripper and she is trying to break into the music industry this is not uncommon, this is very common. When I first saw this girl, I was like, she looks like Tokyo Tony really badly. Like, if Tokyo Tony had another daughter that was a stripper, it would be her. So A1 in confessionals like, another day, another stripper, trying to bust into the music industry. And it's true, there's so many strippers that do want to enter the music industry. She said she raps and she low-key, low-key sings a little bit too. When she started performing for him, I was like, oh, not too shabby. Like, she's not bad. I'm not upset. A1 actually looked a little impressed, and I was like, oh, okay, A1, well, we see you. Anyway, the stripper decides to get back to doing what she does best, which was shaking that ass. And she was shaking her ass, and she was like how it's a real ass. She can't afford no fake booty. And she was moving that thing, honey. I don't know if it's real or fake. She could be lying, but she was saying that it was real. <clears throat> anyway, he started throwing money on her bum, and right when he was doing that, Lyrica walked in. She locked eyes with Lyrica, and she knew right away who Lyrica was, obviously. So at this point, everybody looks like a deer caught in headlights. A1, the stripper, and Lyrica. They all look like WTF. <laughs> Lyrica says that's somebody's whole husband basically telling the stripper like that's her husband she needs to back off I was like okay and she's a whole stripper she's going to do what strippers do why are you mad <laughs> so she asked the stripper what are you doing and I was like um doing what strippers do like what kind of question are you, are you really asking right now? What do you mean? What are you doing? She's being a stripper. That's what she's doing. Why are you asking her this? How about you ask your husband why he's doing what he's doing instead? I cannot stand bitches like Lyrica. I really can't. And I actually, up until right now, I've been a Lyrica fan. But we're going to see what happens this season. So the girl starts apologizing to Lyrica and she starts saying no disrespect, no disrespect. She kind of looks timid and sweet at this moment. Lyrica starts to ask her why she was twerking on A1. The thing is, the girl was never on A1. She was only in front of him and doing her little dance. She was never on him. And so when Lyrica asked her this, the girl was like, because he got ones? <laughs> I said, bitch, I can't. The girl literally answered the question, why are you answering Lyrica? Like, stop this. She said, because he has ones. And I was like, well... There's your answer, sis. You got what you came for. So Lyrica ends up hitting A1 and they can't show it, so they made the screen turn black. And I was like, bye, I want to see 
the drama, the action, you know. I don't really know what triggered it. I think Lyrica might have said something to the stripper, but the stripper started to yell out that she is an Apple Watch. And I was like, Apple Watch? She's like, I Apple Watch, I Apple Watch. And I'm like, what? What's going on? I said, why is she saying she's Apple Watch? I'm like, does Apple Watch have a stripper function? Like, I was so confused, and you guys will <laughs> know why in a second. So basically, Lyrica starts calling the girl a rotten apple, and so the girl starts to concur, and she was like, I get rotten, I get rotten, and I was like, oh my god, this is the ghetto. <laughs> I am too bougie for this establishment, honey. I got to go. So of course, the security steps in, a1 and Lyrica step outside to go have a marital chat. Lyrica tells A1 he has five seconds to apologize to her for being disrespectful. I was like, why is she talking to him like he's a child, first of all? She said, you have five seconds to apologize <clears throat> to me or I'm gonna walk away. And I was like, walk away, bitch. Like, what kind of threat is that? <laughs> Anyway, this scene made me feel like the show is super duper scripted because they went from her hitting him to them outside having a conversation like that never happened. And I was like, okay, this is too much for my taste. She basically started telling him about the K. Michelle drama and K. Michelle and A1 have a history with their business relationship. So he said that he's gonna talk to K. Michelle because it's not cool that she's disrespecting his wife. So Ray J gets home and his meddling ass mama is sitting in his house on his couch waiting for him to arrive, I guess back from Vegas. And they address the princess drama. If you guys watch the show, you know that Mrs. Norwood is not here for princess. She's not here for anybody really with Ray J. I'm not sure, I think she might have liked Tierra Marie, but she's not here for princess and Ray J's relationship. She's never really been supportive of it. And there's always been drama there. Basically, she's not here for Princess slandering Ray J's name, accusing him of cheating, or whatever Ray J is, and embarrassing him while they have business going on. She thinks that Princess needs to publicly apologize to Ray J because he was not cheating on her and she's spreading fake news. She made it very clear that Ray J does not need a wife to be out here tarnishing his name. It's bad for business, period. In my humble, humble opinion, I feel like they should have never have gotten married. I feel like their relationship has always been strained. Ray J and Princess's relationship has never been, you know, the best of the best. And even though you want to root for them, at the same time, if you know a relationship is toxic, you shouldn't be rooting for it to begin with. You know when you kind of want somebody to win, but Ray J been fucking up and Prince has been taking him back. And so I feel like all those things that he did before was a clear out for her, but she decided to stay and stick around and now we here, so. His mom said that until Princess apologizes publicly that she has not another thing to say to her and if that's going to be never, so if Princess never apologizes, then she's good with that. That is no way to live, child. But I mean, sometimes with the in-laws it's hard. <laughs> and I agree with a lot of the things they were saying because I do feel like if you are having issues in your marriage i don't think the first thing you should do is post on social media but when you are on a reality show that is the reality of it you're gonna post on social media because you need a storyline and that's just what it is and sometimes you put the storyline and your paycheck before your happiness which is never never what you should be doing ever so in the next scene i learned that the girl was not calling herself apple watch her name is apple Watts like you know Watts the place she's from the hood she has two children I think they're both boys two boys and her friend who is like uh her friend her name is Lily she's like this butch woman and she's like bald and well not bald but she has like a number two she's also a life coach I don't know if she's certified or not but this is what she said she basically it watches her kids for her this is the only person she trusts to watch her kids and she's really great they've never had any kind of sexual relationship they're literally just friends 
she starts telling Lily about the night before what happened with A1 and stuff and Lily kind of is just giving her advice because she wants to break into the music industry and she wants to do it with A1 by her side but Lyrica's in the way. Apple is a little bit depressed with her situation. She is finding herself in a situation where she wants to be more than a stripper obviously and um Lily tells her stripping is not your life stripping is what you do for work to pay your bills and to take care of your children but it's not who you are you know there's more layers to you okay and I was like oh okay she should be the life coach on uh, motherfucking um what's that show called bad girls club <laughs> Lily basically tells her that she should probably talk to Lyrica and kind of just clear the air and start over and so she thinks that she still can as well and so she's going to do that i actually kind of like apple she seems pretty normal you know she's a stripper she down to earth you know she cool so this next scene is about to get real life messy ad is having a fashion show for her athletic wear line I didn't know she had one, but now I do. Paris and Bridget are there. Of course, Monice is there because Monice is AD's girlfriend, not girlfriend, I don't know. Paris excuses herself to go and call Princess to let her know that um, Monice is at this event and she should come through and page her because you shouldn't be speaking on people's pregnancies and stuff you know it's tasteless so princess shows up during the fashion show and they stop the music chair they grab the mic her and paris are standing at the stage and princess is basically like where monique savage where she at ho <laughs> monique is annoyed right away so princess starts addressing Moniz and calling her an internet thug and a keyboard killer. She asks her what kind of person announces to the world that someone else is carrying someone else's baby and it not being true. She said, obviously I'm pregnant. And then she says, maybe the kind of person that would fake being a lesbian. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, oh. <laughs> so AD starts addressing Princess and she's like, what kind of person tries to shame another girl by releasing her sex tape? And so Princess says, oh no, 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 boo-boo, I did not do that. So AD says, girl, that was you. <laughs> and your bum friend, and then VH1 runs the clip because of last season and the whole sex tape scandal. Apparently the sex tape was already coming out and so Princess tried to get it first and rate it. It was a whole big drama, but somebody was going to release that sex tape, whether it was Princess or not. I don't know who did release it. I don't know if Princess released it or if it came up before then. The point is that the show was centered around that. So P tells Monice that she needs to start focusing on taking her meds and to stop focusing on her. She says if she has a problem with anything, then she can or they can readdress this to months or two and a half months from now after she drops her baby so this entire time Moniz is sitting there quiet okay you can see the rage in her eyes you can see that she is bubbling with fury and anger and emotion because Moniz is a very emotional person so of course once princess stopped talking Moniz yells for princess to come and see her when she drops that demon seed i said no Anytime anybody on the show has talked about Moniz or Moniz's child, it's all been centered around Moniz's parenting and Moniz being a good mom or a bad mom. It's never been about the child. It's never been disrespectful to the child, only disrespectful to her and her skills as a mother and her neglectfulness. She is coming after an unborn baby. And I feel like this just this just hits home for me because obviously when I was pregnant people were trying it and even now that I've had my child people are still trying it like when I had Salem in my video the other day I definitely got a couple comments that I was just like no you did not <laughs> but I don't let stuff like that get to me because honestly I know that people are crazy one two I know that people would never ever see me or shooter on the street come up to us and say anything about our child 
or us, period. So I never really let those things get to me when I was pregnant, child. It was a whole other story. I was emotional, child. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> but I know people that comment negative things on videos and stuff. Ain't no way in mother effing hell that they're out here living lives better than my life. So it doesn't matter to me, you know what I mean? Like, you cannot be happy in your life and sit there and comment something negative on somebody's video. Like, I'm just like, where, where did they do that at? Because honestly, when I was growing up and YouTube first came, became a thing, I was never on there being mean to people and, like, trying to, like, cyber bully them. Like, no, that's weird to me. It's this weird shit. Like... Your parents did a shitty job. <laughs> they did a real shitty job of raising you, but that's none of my business. Anyway, I think that's why it bothers me when Moniz comes for her child. When Moniz comes for Princess's unborn baby. Like, I get you don't like the parents, but you can't come for people and call people's child demon seeds. Like, it's a lot. It's too much. A princess says she will, and she'll even show her how to be a good mom, too. At this point, Moniz gets up and charges at the stage. And so everybody's kind of like trying to like hold her back and stuff because Princess is pregnant. You're not about to fight a pregnant woman. No matter how bad she pisses you off, you ain't about to fight her. She just told you we could talk in two months. Like, no need to fight. She literally picked up a folding chair and was ready to throw it or hit Princess with it. Like, Moniz needs help. <laughs> Paris says in confessional that Moniz should have thrown the chair or hit her with the chair because she would have tagged her ass. So now Princess is in the car. She's laughing hysterically at Moniz, obviously trying to taunt her. And Moniz is outside pissed, like she's fuming. Again, Moniz says something about the child. She says that Princess is a vessel for the spawn of Satan. And so she guess she'll see them in hell. I was like... whoa <laughs> whoa this is a bit much this is a little too much and I just I feel bad for Moniz because the same issues that her brother deals with is the same thing she's dealing with she might not run away you know and they have to find her but Moniz is not mentally stable and I feel like she needs help and therapy to get over whatever she needs to get over but the same way they was calling out her brother on Dr. Phil bitch she needs to be called out too because nobody acts like this I think love and hip-hop is toxic I think love and hip-hop is not good for people that are clearly suffering with mental health issues like Moniz like Tierra Marie like Tommy it's not a good environment for people like that to be in and so I mean they gonna do it because they gotta get their money they gotta get the check cut but there has to be a line drawn and you have to leave when you should leave you have to know when to leave love and hip-hop it's much like any job you need to know when it's time for you to up and go we're at the last scene a1 goes to talk to miss Kimberly, aka K Michelle, aka I don't know who she gonna be next week, child. But to me, I still see K Michelle putting on a front. Ain't no Kimberly, bitch. Anyway, A1 said he was K Michelle's plug once she got to Hollywood. So he's about to send her and her fake ass back to Atlanta where she belongs. So in confessional, K Michelle says that she's not taking back shit that she said about Lyrica because she meant it and it was true. And she said, of course, Lyrica went and ran back to her husband. <laughs> and she was like, oh my gosh, the man with the pearls is coming to get me. I'm shaking in my boots. I was like, Kay is forever coming for these women's husbands. She's always trying to call somebody gay or insinuate that people are gay. And I'm just like, this is messy. She did it with Kirk and his three earrings. Now it's... Homeboy with the pearls and the nail polish. I cannot deal with K. Michelle. I feel like sooner sooner rather than later, the gay community is going to chew K. Michelle up and spit her out because she is going to be viewed as homophobic. And even though she might say she's not homophobic, I feel like the things that she says 
you know, trying to kind of push people out of the closet. I don't know if it's only for down low men or who she thinks are down low, but she's basically calling people out for being gay that are clearly straight and in relationships. Not Well, not clearly straight, but you know. <laughs> but I feel like that could be a thing. Anyway, Kimberly starts speaking to A1 and she tells him exactly how the conversation went at first because she literally was just trying to tell Lyrica, you know, you were late, but Lyrica was not being uh, receptive to that. So of course she mentioned the entitled thing or the spoiled thing and A1 was quick to defend his wife as he should. I'm telling you right now, if my husband don't sit up there and defend me, we got a problem, Houston, okay? Anyway, he's defending Lyrica saying no, she worked very hard for what she has and she's not spoiled and she's not entitled and so k michelle says that lyrica has no respect for the shit that she's done and so a1 in confessional was like what have you done k what have you done and i was like the shade of it all yeah the shade of it all he was basically insinuating that k has not done shit okay he said her last album flopped and that she's with a major label <clears throat> he also said that she's just jealous because Lyrica, who is independent, is charting and she's not. So, of course, Kay brings up the safari situation. Kay Michelle said she is not a damn liar. And so, of course, A1 is saying he doesn't believe it. He said, and honestly, if Lyrica was gonna go and have sex with somebody, it would have to be somebody that's way more lit than he is. And so I said to myself, <laughs> he must say ain't seen the dick pics. <laughs> he must say ain't seen them things, honey, because first of all, a side does not have to be more lit than you are. Side can be bums. Side can be, you know, better. But a side is not, it does not have to be more lit than you are. So I don't know what he was talking about. Lyrica seen the pig's dick videos and decided that Safari was her next catch, honey, because A1 was out here doing the most, let's have a toast. So she decided that she was going to go, go do a little something, something with Safari, honey. And so when he said this, Kay started looking at A1 like, are you sure about that? <laughs> so she sarcastically says to him, so the info just came from the sky then, you know? And so she tells him, you know, I'm always going to tell you the truth. And so he tells her same. And then he starts going in. Okay. And he tells her that her album was garbage. Okay. Kay at this point is speechless. Like, because he was literally reading her for filth, honey. <laughs> so he tells her that her vocals are garbage. The lie detector determined that was a lie, darling. Kay said, well, you produced some of my vocals. So... If you dissing me, yeah, you dissing you, you know? And then she tells him, well, I don't think that your wife is a star. <laughs> A1 tells her that she is full of bullshit and he sees right through her. And so K. Michelle says, are you reading me, sis? <laughs> I was getting my whole life, you guys. He says, I am, bro. And I was like, she just called you sis and asked you if you were reading her. I mean, are you a sis? What? Like, I would not have even acknowledged that. I would have shut my mouth up right then and there because I ain't about to be called no sis. I'm a grown ass man, you know? That's the that's my mentality, but it wasn't his. He wanted to read her for filth, okay? Which was basically allowing her to keep poking at the fact that he is indeed gay. So then he goes to read her some more and he tells her she'll never be a Beyonce or a Rihanna. And she's like, I'm not trying to be. <laughs> and so he then tells her that the industry ain't fucking with her. She's banned from radio. Mm, so at this point, her face is looking shook. You know, nobody has ever been able to go toe to toe with Kate Michelle. Today was the day, honey. Nobody's been able to do it. Today was the day. People that got candles thrown at them, lit candles. People have been just cursed out and dragged. Not today. <laughs> uh, so in confessional, he tells us to Google it and lets us know that K. Michelle is banned from radio for missing promo events. And so he said that K is just looking for somebody new to bully and it's not gonna be his wife. 
So she starts telling him, come on, let's go. Basically getting ready to kick him out the house. And if you look in the window of the back door at K. Michelle's house, you see security about to approach, but you don't actually see security on camera. You just see the reflection of the man, a big man in a suit, okay? So K. said he's not a real producer. He works under somebody. He tells her she can't even sing. And we know this is a lie. This is what I'm talking about. People be getting mad and just saying any old thing. He tells her she can't sing and he had to edit her vocals. She calls him a fake ass Bob Marley. <laughs> he calls her a moon pie face ass. I died. She tells him to go wash his dreads. She calls him Little Richard, another gay jab. She blows him a kiss goodbye. And Kay said the people in LA are so uptight that they always got their thongs in an uproar. Again, insinuating that this man is wearing women's panties. <laughs> and that's basically it. Please don't forget to give me my 5,000 likes or you will not be seeing me next week getting cute for love and hip hop, okay? I love you all so much. I thank you so much for the support, the girl, chat, honey, the continuous support. And um, I will definitely see you guys in the next one.